Hey there, folks, Rel here. I'm the sole author of Distal, a new high fantasy D20 system designed to honor the struggles that your characters face over a life of adventure. The beta version of Distal was just released, and in this video, I wanted to give a brief overview of the system and outline some of the standout features that help set it apart from the other systems that are out there. This video is likely going to be pretty long, so I'll timestamp the main beats below as we talk through it. Before we get into that, though, you can get the full 190 plus page core rules totally free. You could follow the development on Discord and even pre-order the full version of the game while there's still time. All those links are in the video description. Distal is a high fantasy D20 rollover system. It's designed very specifically to be easy to onboard your existing table of Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder players while giving them a totally different experience. In Distal, you're not a superhero like in D&D or Pathfinder or Draw Steel or DC20 or Daggerheart or just about every other new fantasy system that is out there right now. Distal is intentionally more grounded. If you gain the title of hero, it's because you earned it. Distal is grounded but not gritty. It's a high fantasy system that's meant for long campaigns. And if you enjoy making third party content or homebrew, it's designed for that too. You can totally pull off one shots or shorter games just like you could in other systems, but the central themes of Distal include enduring struggle and hardship and loss. And it's one of the major ways that you progress your character. Kind of like how all of the hobbits from Lord of the Rings become more skillful because of the crucible that their harrowing experiences have put them through. We want to challenge your characters in similar ways. A big theme of Distal is the discovery of who you are, and it starts right from character creation. Our background system is prompt-based, and it's unique, not because it hasn't been done before, but because it hits the right level of specificity to give you the banks to the river while letting your imagination run wild. If you don't consider yourself a particularly creative person, that's okay. You'll find yourself being accidentally creative as you wonder how your story would have played out. This theme of using prompts to help you shape stories is seen a lot through the mechanics in the game, including when it comes to death. Death is permanent in Distal. There are no resurrection spells. However, it also takes a while to get to that final good night. Your character isn't going to die just because they turn down the wrong alleyway, and the party isn't going to get TPK just because you end up with some bad rolls. On each brush with death, you accrue a death mark. Death marks are permanent steps toward the road of your final rest or your retirement. That's cool too, and there's guidance for all of it. When you accrue a death mark, two things happen. The first of which is that your maximum health goes up by a small amount, kind of like how a scar will deaden the tissue around it. The second is that depending on how many death marks you have, you might receive a permanent scar. Permanent scars hinder one of your five core attributes, and the scar itself takes on one of three forms. It's either physical or mental or spiritual, and it escalates up that hierarchy as you continue to accrue more marks. When you start dying in Distal, your soul is literally trying to cleave itself from your body. And because of that, the scars you endure aren't just cosmetic, like a slash over an eye, though like, they totally could be. It's more likely that they're tinged with the mysterious or a little bit more supernatural because of part of your soul having tried to move on. As you increase in maximum level, your death mark maximum will increase as well. And you might find some useful things that you can actually do with them, either through your class progression or when you acquire new distinctions, which are like feats in 5e. Some of those you actually need to have death marks for in order to acquire them. So you can choose how hard you want to lean into the death aspect of your character. On a meta level, one of the goals of Distal as a system is to keep the world moving and turn canceled games into opportunities to play. A lot of us are full grown adults. We have busy schedules, demanding lives. Games will just sometimes fall short because of scheduling conflicts. What if the game didn't have to stall outright just because somebody couldn't make it. That's where intermissions or offline adventures come in. How it works is that your GM can just call for an intermission. Maybe it's in an email or a text thread, or maybe it was something that you decided on at the end of your last session. They give you a period of time, like a week or a month or a season, and all of the players at the table will walk through what their characters do 
during that time. The in-world time advances, and the players roll through tables with prompts and make checks to help them achieve what they had set out to do. Maybe you're practicing a skill or earning some coin or gaining some information. The beauty of this is that it's a self-guided experience that lets you commit as hard as you want to. Some folks really into solo TTRPGs where you know you journal the outcome and you can totally do that. You can run encounters for yourself. You can build your own locations. You can collaborate with the GM and we of course encourage that. Other folks won't be as committed. They're going to be too intimidated to run encounters or they won't feel confident enough to do that. And that's totally fine too. All they really need to do is just roll through the tables and write down the outcome. This system is new to Distal as of the beta release and I'm sure it's going to be expanded and refined. So let me know what you think about it down in the comments section below. Distal does a lot to give the GM and the players a bunch of tools to use. There's an adventure builder, an encounter builder, a location builder, and all of it is prompt based. We want to give players the confidence to eventually become GMs themselves so that we try to structure the whole ecosystem to be conducive to that. Another example of this is the organization that you build as a party during session zero, which we advocate for. It's the first team building exercise that your table will undergo and it intentionally gives the party a reason to exist within the world and it lets you know where you stand as far as reputation wise and it helps the GM understand what sorts of themes the players want to have in their game. If I haven't made it clear at this point, Distal is meant to be a very collaborative experience done in a constructive and structured manner. The more that we can get the players and the GM talking to one another, the less confusion that you'll have the less interpersonal conflicts you'll come across at the table, and hopefully the more fun that you'll have existing in the world. That was all kind of meta stuff because I feel like designing a good system needs to begin with an understanding of the social layer that lives on top of TTRPGs, and it's something that I feel very strongly about. In Distal, the combat is tactical and streamlined, but we're not trying to shortcut the experience by making it so you always hit or by giving you static damage numbers. Both of those methods are fun in their own right, but I personally view the act of missing an attack as a sort of inflection point that you could give to a player. The problem is that in some systems, sometimes a miss is just a miss, and then you aren't really given any agency with how to deal with it. So that's the problem that we try to solve in Distal, and the way that we do this is by using a willpower die. Willpower is a combat-only resource, and it's very limited. You start with a willpower die, which is a d6 or a d8 or a d10 in some cases, and you can expend it to add the result to a missed attack or as a check against a negative effect. Some class abilities will also use willpower to fuel them. You gain willpower when you kill an enemy or when you complete a sub-objective during combat. And to that end, it becomes more of a choice if you want to miss, if you're willing to spend that resource, and you're trying to create situations as you go through combat that provide you with willpower so that you'll have it on hand. It all adds another layer to the fight and in extreme cases, it helps you avoid what would be like a cleanup phase that some fights could devolve into just by virtue of giving you the momentum of kill, willpower, kill harder. That said, not every combat needs to end in a bloody victory. We also have what we call nonviolent resolutions. As an option, you could try to make a diplomatic effort to ease tensions or you can attempt to flee combat, or you can attempt to rout the enemy and intimidate them into fleeing themselves. The way you do this is by sort of a skill challenge based on how well the fight is going. If the enemy is really confident that they're going to destroy you, then you might try to flee and they'll probably keep pursuing you. If you roll poorly, you might even end up separated from a party member and then have to contend with the fight on two different fronts. Of course, some creatures won't be able to be reasoned with at all. For example, you're probably not going to reason with a bunch of elementals or wolves, unless you can, because some classes or lineage options might actually be capable of doing that. This, however, is always at the discretion of the GM, but it can create some really cool character moments. Speaking of classes, there are currently 11 in Distal, and all of them are molded to fit the world, while touching on the sorts of fantasies that you're probably really comfortable with. We won't cover classes specifically in this video, but I did want to mention the leveling structure. At every third level, you get to choose a signature, which could be considered like a subclass, but it's more that you choose how you want to accent your base class 
based on the role that you want to play in your party or the themes that you want to lean into. For example, the cut purse is meant to feel very roguelike, but there's all sorts of different ways to play a rogue. If you want to be more of a scrappy, thuggish bruiser, you can totally do that. If you want to be more of a wisecracking, bard-like playstyle, you can totally do that too. And if you want to play the traditional Garrett from Thief the Dark Project style rogue, you can totally do that as well. So every three levels, you gain a new class signature, which are one of three choices. Every two levels, you gain a new distinction, which is like a feat in 5e. So even if you played a full party of just cut purse, just as an example, you could play them all totally differently and it would work because it's not just about the classes. It's about your weapon choice as well. If you wanted to play a spell casting magister that uses sword and board, you could totally do that. If you want to play a berserker that's more like a scald or a bard, you can just give them an instrument and they would totally be able to do that too. All right, folks, that was a whole lot. It's not nearly everything, not even close, but you can have nearly everything at your fingertips if you pick up the beta core rules for free again or join our development discord. You'll find more information about Distal here on the channel as time goes on. And if you believe in what Distal is trying to accomplish, creating a grounded high fantasy system that rewards the hardship and struggle that your characters face, feel free to go ahead and pre-order the game in the video description below. And if this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel. And if you have any specific questions that you'd like to see me cover or create a new video on, go ahead, leave those thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.